In this video I'm gonna show you how to make in-camera time-lapse using your Lumix camera's time-lapse features. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto, I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. In this video I'm gonna show you how to use your Lumix camera's time-lapse features to make a time-lapse in camera from start to finish. But before I go any further, please remember to subscribe to my channel and also check out my merch, there's a link down below. Okay, what is a time-lapse? Time-lapse is a, a movie or a video where things happen much faster than they happened at the real time at the time of the capture. And time-lapse is made of several 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 hundreds probably uh, photographs put after each other in editing or in camera and when there are enough of those uh, photographs still images it gives the sense of movement or sense of time passing but before we start setting up um, our lumix cameras there are a couple of things we have to figure out first uh, we have to figure out the interval between the frames, how many seconds between each uh, photograph. And then we have to figure out how many frames do we need. Let's first talk about the interval between the frames. It depends on what your subject is, what kind of um, a scene are you uh, shooting. Let's say you're shooting a landscape. Uh, that's a very common time-lapse subject and um, you'd like to show those clouds forming in the sky and the shadows moving on the ground when the earth is rotating and the sun is kind of moving in the sky. Something like a 10 second interval is a good starting point for something like that. But you have to experiment and see uh, what comes out. But I'd say start with the 10 second interval and uh, see what happens and then experiment if you are not happy with the result. And then if you're shooting something like people walking down the street or traffic or something, that's also a very common subject for time lapses, then something like two seconds or one second is a good uh, interval for um, between the frames. And there's one more thing to consider with the interval. If there's something, some subject object moving across the frame, whether it's a car or a person or something, that subject should appear at least in uh, four, maybe five frames to give a proper sense of movement. If that object or subject, whatever is moving across the frame, if it only appears in one frame, there is no sense of movement. And even if it appears on two or three frames, it's very like abrupt movement or it's not fluent movement. So if you really want to show, for example, a, a person walking across the frame and you'd like to give a real sense of movement, make sure that person is at least in five or six, seven frames, then you start to see a real like a, a movement there. And I give you those uh, numbers only as a starting point. Experiment and um, see what comes out. And then the total number of frames. How many frames do you actually need? Well, it depends on your frame rate or the frame rate you are going to be using in the final video. Here in Europe, 25 frames per second is quite common. So I need, if I'm using 25 frames per second, I need 25 photographs for each second. So if, say, I need, um, I want a, a 10 second time lapse, I need 100 frames for that. So uh, figure out your, uh, your frame rate and then calculate from there how many frames appro approximately you're gonna need. And remember also that you can always uh, speed up your animation or the time-lapse in post-processing. But you can't really slow it down if you don't have enough frames. The movement, the movement becomes jerky. 
So if you have a, a few extra frames, there's no harm. And if you have too few frames, then um, you might run into some trouble. All right, let me now show you uh, how to set up your Lumix camera to take time-lapse uh, movies. And after that, I'm gonna uh, tell you about the recommended exposure modes and uh, how to focus um, before you start uh, actually shooting the time-lapse. But let me grab my Lumix G90. The setup is quite similar on every Lumix camera, but I'm gonna show you um, how it works on the G90. First, you gotta go to uh, the time-lapse menu and um, on Lumix uh, G90 the time-lapse and animation is in the same menu, but on some Lumix cameras they are two separate menus, the time-lapse and the animation. And we are looking at, uh, look, and we are looking for the time-lapse menu, not the time-lapse animation or stop motion animation. We are not looking for that right now. So, time-lapse shot, we, sh we choose time-lapse shot. Then there's a um, shooting interval setting, it's on or off. You have to turn it on, so the time-lapse uh, interval setting is on. Then the start time, you can set it now, or you can set uh, a specific uh, starting time for the time-lapse. And then there's the image count and the shooting interval. There you can choose up to 9999 frames and um, you can set the shooting interval too. And on some cameras you can start the time lapse in the menu and on some cameras like the G90 and G9 for example you have to turn the dial to a correct position to um, start the time lapse. If the interval between the frames is really really long or if you set the time lapse to begin in several hours, the camera will go to sleep but it will wake up when it's time to start taking pictures. So it's quite simple as you can see but there are a couple of things to remember. First of all, set your aspect ratio to 16 to 9. Because if you use some other aspect ratio, you will get black bars on both sides of the frame, on the left and on the right side. And this is very important if you'd like to capture all those frames also in RAW format. Even if you set your aspect ratio to 16 to 9, but if you shoot RAW only, your final video will be in 4 to 3 aspect ratio. So if you'd like to finish the video in camera, but you'd still like to have those RAW files. Remember to set, it, to set your camera to RAW plus JPEG and the aspect ratio to 16 to 9 if you want to fill the full video frame. And when the camera has finished taking all the pictures, it will ask you if you'd like to create the video right away. If you answer yes, you have some options. You can choose the video quality, you can choose the frame rate, and you can choose if the video plays normally or if it's reversed. But if you don't want to create the video right away, you can always go to the play menu and choose time-lapse video. And if you have several time-lapse sequences uh, on your card, the camera will know which pictures belong to which sequence. So you don't have to go through hundreds or thousands of images. You just uh, you can uh, browse the time-lapse sequences as groups. And you just select the sequence or the group you want and create the video. And you have the same options also here. You can choose the quality, frame rate and the order of the sequence. However, there's one thing that you should uh, be aware of if you are using the G9. If you have two cards in your camera and your image sequence spreads over two cards, you can only create a video in camera uh, using images on one single card at a time. It's not like a huge deal, but it's good to kind of uh, know. And if your battery dies in the middle of a time lapse, you will still have all the frames on the memory card that the camera captured before the battery went dead. So you're only gonna lose those frames that the camera 
didn't actually shoot at all. And the best exposure mode is, uh, in my opinion, the aperture priority. It takes care of the exposure if the lighting changes between the frames. And uh, the aperture priority is good because the aperture stays the same and the video uh, or, the, uh, indivi or the, <laughs> the individual frames will look the same. If you shoot on another exposure mode like P or S, the aperture will change if the lighting changes and that may make the each individual frame look slightly different if the depth of field changes. So the aperture priority is uh, probably the best mode. There are some situations where you might prefer manual exposure, like if you want to do a night to day time lapse or something similar. But that kind of a time lapse is a bit special and I'm not going to go into that in this video. That's a topic uh, for another video in the future, maybe. And then about the focusing method. I recommend using a manual focus just to make sure, absolutely sure, that the focus stays the same throughout the whole sequence. See, if the camera is on autofocus, it may try to focus um, on something else or maybe there's one blurry frame in the middle of the sequence for some reason and uh, that blurry frame can pretty much ruin the whole sequence because if you take one frame off there somewhere in the middle of the sequence you can see it in the final video. So use manual focus, that's the best, unless you have a really, really good reason to use something, uh, the autofocus. So there you have it, that's how you make uh, a time-lapse movie in your Lumix camera from start to finish. The, uh, the time-lapse features on Lumix cameras are really, really good and it would be a waste not to try them. And time-lapses can be quite fascinating to look at. So, by all means, uh, try them and please let me know in the comments down below how it all went. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.